and, um, and start with that one. A few things I want to show you guys that you have to be to be familiar with. Um, difference between contact term and motor starter. Anybody, now you guys are graduates. Anybody knows what the difference between a contactor and a motor starter? I can tell you, a, a, a motor starter is a contactor plus. Anybody knows what plus what? What do you have in a motor starter? You have a contactor that opens and closes. We were sizing him yesterday. What did we put that little tiny thing that protects? Overload. Overload, thank you. So if you if you add overload to a contactor, you uh, you have just created a motor starter. That's a motor starter. So a contactor is just doesn't have overload. You add a mod, an overload to it, you created a contactor. So they're very similar. Different function of fuse and overload. You guys know that one. Overload protect the equipment from what? Rob, Rob, my friend. Overload protect the equipment from overload, right? Um, from what burning from what from overloading so if I have a saw and the saw is supposed to cut through wood and you you jam it against concrete and you keep pushing on it you're overloading the saw right so that's going to supposed to protect you the fuse is supposed to protect it from ground fault and short circuit we know that for a while uh, different type of overloads most of the time Chris we as electrical engineers and designers we all oh, in this day and age you were making fun of my uh, <laughs> Um, what is it, the paging system. In this day and age, everything is electronics, what we specify. The reason, Chris, why we teach the non, uh, the up the heaters and other stuff, because electricians are required for our electrician group. They're required to maintain old systems. So old systems are addressable, non-addressable for fire alarm system, old, and of course, uh, heaters as well as electronics. So we'll talk about the different types of, um, of operation for these uh, babies. Schematic diagrams. Um, control circuits and schematic connect control circuits uh, with schematic diagrams. We guys are electrical engineers. We design electrical system in buildings. We from time to time we get a call. I get a call that can we hire a control uh, do electrical drawings? They call it electrical drawings, and what they mean, guys, is schematics. How to show you have five air handling units um, and two um, and let's just say two chillers. And two boilers. Can you do the whole control system for this for that, that HVAC system? That's what they call it schematics. Our class doesn't go that deeper into it. We don't go deep into the control circuits and the schematics. There's a whole lot of there's a CAD called electrical CAD. I don't know if you've seen it. Electrical CAD, guys. All what it does, it shows the contacts and 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 and, and the control and so forth. Uh, wiring diagrams is what we do. You guys, uh, you show wiring diagrams in a building. Schematic diagrams is how how are you going to tie the equipment point to point. If you look at this, can you guys see all these wires inside the fire alarm system? There is a schematic. I don't know if you can see it right there. There's a schematic diagram that tells you which point is going to be connected to which point. That's your schematic. That's what you give to the electricians so they can tie this switch gear into the system or so forth. Um, okay. Um, difference between schematic um, or load diagrams and wiring diagrams. Wiring diagrams you give to wire power and lighting. Schematic diagrams, guys, it's all about control. It really is. You grab, here's what a schematic diagram would look like. If you look, wire, you know what wiring diagram for this system is, Ashley? Bring in your here's a wiring diagram. Bring the power from here, putting it right in here, and from here down to the motor. That's the wiring diagram. The schematic diagram, can you see all these? Relays and all these contacts and, and stuff, all the, how are they going to be connected together, AC and DC? That's your schematic diagram. So, how the system is connected together. Um, you guys have been done, you've done schematics a little bit with Gary, right? A little bit, not a whole lot. Two wire um, controls, or three wire controls. They call it two wire controls, guys, if you have a thermostat in your house. The thermostat, if the power goes off, and the power comes back, do you think the furnace in your house will continue to work? It's connected to a thermostat that connected so-called into a two-wire control, two-wire control. Two-wire control for the most part, some of the two-wire control, if the power goes off, the system stops. If the power comes back, the system will automatically start. You do this one in heating and cooling systems. Um, now, would you do this one on a saw, a machine, do you really want, so I'm cutting through an industrial machine and the power went up. 
I went to I went outside because waiting for the power to come back. Do you think when the power comes back, do you want the machine to restart auto automatically? Danger. So what they do is with this one, two wire mostly with HVAC equipment with a couple of applications. The other one called three wire, you guys will be looking at it in a second here. Um, switch. We we'll look at the operation over temperature device. Uh, so disconnect the power from the motor, the whole the via switch. You can look at it in a second here. Um, overload protection provide, not the same as a fuse, provide, we talked about overload, protecting the system from being overloaded. Um, so the starters, guys, manual starters, DEMA starters, and all this stuff, the key point with them is a contactor plus a tiny little overload. Plus an oh, it should be here, tiny little overload. Contactor plus a tiny little overload. And you look at the picture in a second. Here's um, here's the cheapest. This is how you do a fan, a motor fan, guys. A motor fan, uh, a fan in a bathroom. That's basically how you wire a fan in a bathroom. You grab it here, you bring your phase A at a neutral, and you power that baby from 120 volt. How do you control it with a snap switch? Snap switches, without getting into two details, guys, they're good up to fraction horsepower. If you have a, a, a piece of equipment, a fraction of a horsepower. Um, so let's just say a horsepower equal or less to one horsepower. Typically, if it's equal or less to a one horsepower, you can control it with a snap switch on the wall. Um, you go higher than that, then you start having a magnetic starters and controllers and so forth. <clears throat> what you're looking at is this one we wire it. This is a magnetic starter, um, contactor to a, a single phase magnetic starter. The advantage of this one, Chris, when you put a, the difference between that one that you're looking at and the one before, this is manual. You have to physically, mechanically go flip the switch. If you go down here, I can take a, and we're not showing the control circuit here, you can take the control circuit from here, and I have a device that interface this device here, and I'm just saying this is running at 24 volt. And this device is actually getting a signal here from my, uh, my computer. You can have a little device that interface in the circuit that get a signal to close the contact here, close the contact to start and stop this motor from your computer. Who cares? That's all how the HVAC system does. Johnson controls and, and all this stuff are related to controlling the equipment remotely. Contactor plus overload make so-called magnetic starter. Con contactor plus overload make this one having to be a, a, a manual starter. So this will be flipping it uh, by hand. Um, but a manual starter, a magnetic starter will have a, a little coil. A magnetic starter will have a, a little coil like you, you're looking at here. Uh, three phase motors. This one manual, the way we're showing it right now, we have them in our lab, guys. If it says manual press, this means there was a switch right here. This is a manual. So it looks not like this to disconnect. When you physically, mechanically, you have to close these contacts, right? You physically, mechanically, you have to close them. There is no coil whatsoever. I don't know if you guys wired magnetic starters, manual magnetic with Gary, and in the, in the yes. manual. Yes, oh, the, the manual relay. And the magnetic. Okay, so that's that's basically it. The whole thing here is called the ma manual. Almost talk about obsolete. Almost in in a in a building, you would never do a manual magnetic start. It has no value for it. Because somebody has to go walk in there and turn the air handling unit on. So that's not a not a good idea. Okay. Magnetic starters are the, the best guys, as we all know. Magnetic starters, um, when you have a magnetic starter, um, obviously you have to have a coil, you energize a coil, so you have the magnetic starters. Um, you energize a coil, you drive a multiple contacts, that's the whole idea of any magnetic starters. You're going to see a few of them coming here. You have a coil right here, you energize the coil, bam, 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 you shut, you energize it. Motor starters, you bring the magnetic contactor and you add an overload to it. It becomes so-called motor starters. Combination, this is really interesting. So if I have a magnetic contactor, magnetic contactor, guys, is in this case, it probably would be uh, one of these magnetic starters. That's probably solid state. So the solid state ones. Solid state magnetic. Um, well, these are I I no, these are 
T1, T2, this is, no, T1, T2, these are I, uh, IEC, IEC magnum starter, IEC though, not the NEMA. NEMAs will be big fat ones, IEC. So IEC magnetic starters, this is your magnetic starter. The, if you add, um, to, make it a, to make it a starter, guys, you add an overload. To make it a combination, you add a fuse or a circuit breaker. You add a fuse or circuit breaker. So when you leave Dunwoody, if somebody say, I need a combination, you're going to hear the word combination starter. What would a combination starter entitle? You have a contactor, an overload, and an overcurrent protection device all in one. Um, so you have a circuit breaker here, a contactor, and an overload, all in one big fat box. That's called a combo. This one is a combo. Now, uh, this one, guys, is only the contactor. This one is just the contactor. Uh, motor starter, this one, is just the contactor and the overload. Make sense? So this one contactor overload, this one contactor only, this is the three of them together. MCCs, guys, when we design an MCC and we talk about buckets, when we went to Boston Scientific, the buckets actually include an overcome fiction device, fuse or circuit breakers, contactor, and an overload. Contactor and overload. Magnetic relays or magnetic starters, guys, typically you bring, you're looking at this one right here. You bring a voltage 120 over here. You create a magnetic force that physically, mechanically push these contacts, grab them here. And um, when you grab them, this is normally closed contact. This is normally open. So what happens when you grab this one here? This will change position to this location here. If you don't understand this one, you will never, ever be able to understand control. That picture, if you don't understand how it really works, you would never... Uh, um, a non, <laughs> this is not digital relays. You have a digital relays that work, solid state work differently. Um, Non-digital relays guys work on a coil, you energize a coil, magnetic force, physically, mechanically push this handle down, it will change the status. So if I have a light over here, I grab, uh, let me just say, I'm gonna turn the light on from here. So I, here's the light. I brought my light on from here. Um, so I close this contact, and where's the other end of the contact? So I grab, I have, I have to have a neutral. I'm going to see on the left, the comment for the... Oh, thank you, here you go, thank you. Here's the C is coming all the way, and that's what I thought, where the heck is that going? And um, so I have my contacts, and I bring in power. I need a power source though. So I bring this one in here, and I need to bring a power source, so I bring my power source right in here, 120. So 120 volt. Okay, so I brought my 120 to the contact. I broke it. Now that the ocean, it wouldn't work. Let's take the hot first, the neutral. Here's my 120. 120 volt here. Then I need to take the, this one all the way to here. Now we're working. So this, but basically this will act as a switch. So now when you when when you energize it, this light will go on. Any question guys about this magnetic starter? You can use it as a parking lot lighting relays. You can use it as a magnetic starter. You can use it to initiate anything. Everybody knows normally open, normally closed. Normally open, normally closed. Normally open, normally closed. Contacts. Okay, so schematic diagrams, guys, you put all these together. Um, so this is just describing how the normally closed, normally, I have normally closed contact here. I don't know if you guys can see. This is what I have normally closed. This contact from here and here is normally open. So by flipping, you change from normally closed to normally open. Normally closed, normally open. Can you guys see that? So when you flip this one here, you close that. When you energize. And at the same time, you open that. So this one is actually what you see is normally closed here. Is my contact here. This one is what we see is normally open, right? So normally open, open, close, and these two are tied, uh, there's a common, the common one is tied to here. That's my common. Normally open, normally close. Any comments, guys, about the relays? That's the basic control of, um, of, of schematics. 
when you when you have schematics, guys, when you have schematic diagrams, they they tie them all together. A couple of things you have to put in. You have to have your contactors, your starter coil. Um, coils are always a circle. Contactors are always. You're looking at these normally closed, normally open contactors. Input devices all tied together to create the system. And here's the here's your input devices, and then moving fast through these guys. Um, floating switch. This is normally open, so if the floating this is mechanical. If the water starts pushing this one up, what's going to happen to this contact at one time? Float. So these are your input so-called input devices, guys. Without input devices like these mechanical, physical input devices, you, you can't understand the control system. You really can't. Flow switches, normally open. The most important, normally, normally close. Pressure switches, with pressure, if pressure builds up here, this will close. Pressure builds up here, this will open. Uh, this is temperature. Temperature switch, temperature reaches the, the limit, closes. If temperature goes higher, uh, for this normally open, this will open. Everybody knows how these, when I started, guys, um, well, when I started my career as an electrical engineer, the single most important things, Dustin, that confused me when I was probably um, your age, is what does that mean? What state is this contact in? This, they always show you the state of the contact when it's de-energized. They call it de-energized. No function. They call it the normal state. So normally, if there is no floating anything here, this will be normally closed. By design, it's normally closed. You have to have something. If this is a, a switch right here, you have to have the water going all the way up, 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 pushing it physically, mechanically to open it. So you have to have a process to open it. So what you see is always when you show them in the schematics, it's always shown in the normal, the normal situation when, when it's de-energized. If that's not enough for you guys, you can look at all these devices. We have CAD, we have Visio, Visio, and we also have electrical CAD, where you can build a complete control system, a complete control system. If anybody has, we don't teach a complete control system. This is an electrical design as in building. But there's a lot of specialties, a lot of need guys for control engineers, where you can put all these systems. Um, they really do the, the, the hard work is not to make this light turn on. The hard work is to take a, a, a heating, cooling system, interface multiple equipments together in a full control system, make it work. So anyway, so there's a lot of stuff, guys. You can look at the symbols that you can use for all of these at your own time, um, digital and analog. OK, any question, guys, about the symbols, putting them together as schematics? Now, Unfortunately, we don't do the control here, as I said, but it's really, at least in this class. Overload, there's a couple of uh, places where you can overload. The cheapest, easiest way of getting an overload is a heater. You, you let the current go through a heater, it heats up, but physically, mechanically, it pushes two contacts to open. Uh, the better one is the electronic. You can sense that the current has gone from 50 amp to 150 amp or 100 amps and electronically make a decision to open or close or alarm. Or you can use a magnetic. Magnetic is like a, a contactor, like an overcome friction device. Overcome friction device, guys, like 20 amps. 20 amps magnetically, if the 20 amps turn into a 50, uh, let's just say an overload situation would be 30 amps. So this piece of equipment is supposed to take 20 amps, now it's jamming and it's taking 30 amps. Magnetically, it starts building a magnetic force, magnetic force the current, and at one point it will flip this circuit breaker over. The most common one right now in the equipment that we install is electronic, electronic um, circuit, electronic um, overload. Now, some of you guys might, yeah, there's certain application where thermal might be a, a good application. But for the most part, for most of the building that we use, electronic is good, good to go. Magnetic overload, um, it looks something like this. It's a coil. If the current, the current was 20 amps here, all of a sudden it pumps up into 30 amps. You create a magnetic force right into this coil, and that magnetic force physically, mechanically open these contacts through the magnetic force that you create in this coil. 
So that's your magnetic. Um, the second one is electronic, guys. Electronic, I have the same thing. I'm supposed to get 20 amps. I moved it to 30 amps. When you pick 30 amps, you will send the signal here. Let's just say um, 50 milliamp signal came out of this. Uh, <clears throat> see, this is CT. They call it CT current transformers. It picks a, a 50 milliamp. It goes into an electronic device, solid state analyze it and over here it makes a decision to open this contact to open this contact and that's the contact that control what the contact that controls the flow of the power to the flow of the power it's exactly these the contact that controls the flow of the power um, to the control circuit of the motor of the motor any question guys about the magnetic current and uh, and and the uh, Electronic. Electronic, you were talking about CTs, current transformer that takes a 30 amps, change it into, I'm just throwing this number, 50 milliamps, milliamps, or 0.5 amps, or, or so forth. Uh, 3 phase overloads, or 1 or 3 phase overload relay, uh, heaters, um, you have a heater, in this case this is when three single overload relays, this is three single overloads, one, two, three, each one of them can open the circuit. So if there's an overload, so this was a 20 amp, this is 20 amp, and this one is 30 amps. So there's something wrong in phase A, in phase, uh, that would be phase C. <clears throat> so this is good with phase C, this will open. Can you guys see, yes, there are three of them, but any one of them can de-energize the circuit. Because if I open this, or I open this, or I open this, the outcome is what? This will be de-energized. When this de-energized, these will be open so I can control the circuit. You would never ever be able to understand control, guys, if you don't understand that little schematic here. That little schematic. <clears throat> this one is a three-phase, any one of these one unit any one of them can heat up and open the same contact anyone the same thing they're all in each phase any one of them it senses there is a flow higher flow of current it it pops the that contact open and in a case like this will de-energize this uh, this magnetic uh, contactor any comments any questions i assume that we have seen that guys before it's not nothing new for all of us we Again, we really, a lot, a lot of the time, first we stopped, like all this stuff here, you guys were doing it for me. <clears throat> this is what we call it, um, controller, magnetic starter. When you guys did it with us, when you designed it in our Revit, we really, all this stuff inside that box here, we just call it magnetic starter. That's it, NEMA, you can decide the NEMA. That's when you size with me all this, we call it NEMA, NEMA number, say, one, NEMA one. And we didn't get into the details how it works and so forth. All these are your NEMA number one, NEMA number one, inside one box. <clears throat> Schematic diagrams, guys, shows all the components as they're connected. Um, with all the diagrams between them. Wiring diagrams is how you connect the components in in the field, in the field. <clears throat> um, how you connect them in the field. So, um, so if you look at the, the top one, my top one is supposed to be the schematics, right? And the bottom one is supposed to be the, the controller. So what they are. Okay, so a schematic diagram and wiring diagram. So if you can see, these are three different locations. You, they can show the boxes. The most important thing about the wiring diagram, it shows the actual physical location. Here's one box, here's another box, here's a third box, and here's a fourth box here coming. And this is transformer also at, at another box. All these are where well, you have to pull all these wires between all these devices. This one care less about all the, where the boxes are located. It just control. So in order to wire the system, <clears throat> Rob, you really need this one, the wiring diagram. 
the control the control diagram it makes it helps you the schematics here this is my schematic this is my wiring this one i can go to town with this i can go wire it right now with this diagram this one it tells me understand but uh, it might not tell me for example that this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy right now where else and these guys um and what else are we moving? all these are actually in one box can you guys see that all these i highlighted the top are in one box and also this contact right this con yep this contact all these are in one box um no this one is not with them so this these are this the stuff that i highlighted here or also the magnetic <clears throat> So the coils, the overloads, and these two. There you go. These are only one in this box right here. So anyway, the schematics will help you understand how the system works. The wiring diagram will help you go there, give it to an electrician or yourself, and go wire it. Point to point wiring between different equipment. Can you guys see the difference? How all these are in action in one box, but here they're all scattered all over scattered all over can you guys see that can i get a yes chat we see the difference between the schematics and actual wiring now good good electricians can take the schematics and turn it into a wiring diagram you know I mean but not so good electricians they need you to give them this when we go guys medium voltage equipments and all the stuff they always they always go by point to point wiring point to point so it doesn't take a smart to take, go pull a wire from this point to this point and they actually number them and a lot of these stuff take it from point one to point 30. so all these are numbered okay so that's my schematics <clears throat> um the way they read the schematics guys <clears throat> schematic diagram or ladder diagram um the time um you when you read the ladder diagram, I don't know if you guys done it with the, did you do, what's that software that Gary does with you? Um, can't remember. Constructor. Did you guys do the constructor with Gary? Yeah. A software called constructor? The constructor, when you do it, you start, you start with, with the ladder diagram and you start with a coil, contact, flows, and another coil here, coil one, contact, um, one, and another so here's my 120 volt coming from this this is my hot and this is my neutral and so when you start reading the diagram guys you go from top to bottom left to right so if i have um, this for example this is coil number one and if i see contact number one contact number one is driven by coil number one if you don't know how to do that you, you, you're confused if a coil has the same number as a contact, this means that coil is driving that partic particular contact. Um, and when you energize a coil, <clears throat> here's a coil. When we energize the coil, guys, this coil is driving a contact. When you bring 120 across this coil, you brought 120. What happened to this contact? This contact is normally over. If I bring 120, I energize the coil. What's going to happen to this coil? This coil is going to close. This coil is going to close. Any question, guys, about this? So when you energize a coil, you oh, the coil will physically, mechanically drive the contacts to close. So that's how um, that baby works. If you if you leave Dunwoody without knowing how to read and understand this one, come to your friend Chad for refund. I'm not kidding you. Um, magnetic starters, here's your start. You push this bind, guys, here. The first thing you do when you push this bind, you impose, let's just say this is 480 volt system, and this one, a 120 volt. So when you put that one, you energize. Now, this is energized. When this is energized, it's going to drive bam, bam, bam. It's going to drive the, these contacts shut, and my motor is what? My motor is running, spinning, right? Up an overload, if this overload is to open, right? So I open this contact, what's going to happen? This will de-energize, and these will open again. So this is the basic, the basic 
magnetic starter control and power circuit basic you can't go base more basic than that one um, i'm sure gary told you guys when you did it with the wiring um, the stop button is always in series the start button is always in parallel with the so-called holding contact so-called holding contact but when you energize this you drive this to shut down so it bypasses the momentarily start push button the momentarily start push button if you can if you do again as a designer guys we really don't get deeper into this one but as an electrical professional it makes you a better designer to understand how the system works you will be in a situation where you're trying to analyze a, a, a situation um if you don't understand how it works it'll be really hard forward reverse this is another step guys when you can have forward reverse you, what they do is they have two sets of um, contacts driven by two magnetic starters. So if I have to forward this motor, guess what's going to happen here? You close this. This will shut down this baby. And at the same time, will open this so I can't go reverse. Can you guys see how it, when you close it, energize, this is energized now. This will shut down. And my motor is bam, bam, bam going forward. And I also open the reverse so they cannot run reverse and you see that interlock they call it mechanical interlock electrical interlock so then chris doesn't like it to go to blow the air outside the building he wants to blow, uh, blow air inside the building guess what happens then you come and close the reverse the minute that you close the reverse guess what guys you open first you open you open the forward so the forward is open now and then you energize the reverse and this will close and bam 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 will open and these hopefully will open anybody knows what happened if the con if the if the two contacts forward the reverse close at the same time what happened you have a three-phase short circuit dead three-phase short circuit so that's why i don't know if Gary, when, when you guys emphasize it emphasize the electrical and mechanical interlocking between these equipment if you forward the reverse of motor at the same time, you have a dead single phase-to-phase -phase short circuit. Bam! We did it in the lab, our lab motor labs at night, and you can easily see. Um, for example, if this contact here to close before this contact open, you have a phase-to-phase -phase short circuit. Do you guys know how to reverse a three-phase motor? I need two phases, A and C. Flip them, make C A and A C. And you got yourself a three-phase induction motor reverse. The last one, this is guys for uh, um, HVAC equipment, a controller for HVAC equipment. Um, let's get that one. Yeah, for HVAC equipment for compressors. So this comes with a lot of control, guys. A lot of control for it. So the thermostat calls. So the thermostat calls for. Um, for cool air, look what happens. Now we close that one. Now this coil is energized, okay? When this coil is energized, where's C? Condenser. Uh, my C is the condenser, will close. Now I have my compressor up and running, bam, 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 we're compressing. And at the same time, guys, look at this one. I have my FR, which is the condenser fan, is energized my compressor and my condenser fan are up and running and of course this will be closing here this will be closing as part part of the system this will be closing any question guys any comments about this so that's how your compressor condenser open uh, the funny thing is if, if you have an overload, look at this one. If you have a high pressure, and instead of creating a bomb inside your compressor, if you have a pressure, this will open, kill the circuit. If you have low pressure, this will open, kill the circuit. So if you have an overload condition, this will open, kill the circuit. If you have in the condenser or the compressor, this will open, kill the circuit. All these guys' devices are safety devices. All these are safety devices. All these devices our safety devices the power circuit and the control circuit. This is your control circuit. This is your power circuit. 
power to power the equipment, control to control the equipment. Any question, guys? Any question about this? So that's basically, that's what, if you can, if you can look at the, this book, it, before I, I'll let you guys go, I want to make sure, please, read it one time. Don't graduate from Dunwoody without knowing how the system, a simple control system with magnetic starter works plus reverse. That's the most important things that you can do to yourself. Let me go see if I can forget something here. Um, okay, there you go. No, I don't want this. Okay, this is just a couple of pictures, guys. I want to make sure that I didn't forget a couple of things. We talked about this control magnetic. This just talks about the coil, the spring. Physically, mechanically, when you go to the coil, guys, here's the coil that energizes the spring that holds it. Uh, shaded coil to make the system work. Movable contact, stationary contact. These are where physically, mechanically they're located. Um, I'm sure you guys, if we haven't done them with Gary. Um, so that's a couple of things about normally, open, normally closed contacts. All the contacts that you can use for your interface. Double flow, double switches. Um, so a lot of contacts, heaters, how the heaters work and so forth, reading your own. Um, this is an interesting situation. Here's a, as you have, you can energize a coil, guys, right here, and you interface. This is a CR control, can close a contact and can interface it with a PLC, like the one that you have here. You can send a signal every time. You can send a signal every time this coil is energized. To the PLC, so that the, I can't emphasize the possibility is endless when it comes to the control. It really is. You can input or output from this control circuit anything you want. Talk to about this one. Accelerate contacts, closes. And this guys goes through the process of um, look at this one for example when we close the. Um, Go back here. When you go push the start button, can you guys see right here? You push the start button, you energize the coil, right? Now, look what happened. Next, you close this uh, holding contacts and you close these contacts here. If you guys see how the shaded area is the energized ones. Then, if you go to the stop, you push the button, you de energize everything. Just walk you through schematics of the whole system. Same thing as the forward that I, I walked you through. They walk you through forward and reverse how you energize them. Now, the motor is going forward. And uh, in this case, the motor is going reverse. And I have switches, different type of con Lima contactors, and input output devices, and off it goes. Any comments, guys? Any questions? I know I went fast through it because this is not the first time we have done or seen a, a motor control. Um, I think you would do yourself a favor if you understand it. It really is. Any comments? Any questions? That's it for Friday.